Chapter 10. My Painful Problem Humphreyville is going to have some special visitors in two weeks, Mrs. Brisbane announced as soon as class began on Monday. There was a buzz around the classroom. Who would these guests be? We're having a parents' night so your families can see what a great town you've created. And I've invited one of our city council representatives to come talk about our own community. A city council representative sounded very important, almost as important as Principal Morales. We'll have to make sure that Humphreyville is in the best shape possible in the next two weeks. All my friends were excited. Mrs. Brisbane gave out new job assignments for the week. When Gail was named Animal Keeper, I couldn't help noticing that Miranda stared down unhappily at her table. How could one small hamster, namely me, have caused trouble for one nice human, namely Miranda? Suddenly, Mandy began to wave her hand. Mrs. Brisbane called on her. I think it's unfair, she said in her cranky voice. What is unfair? asked the teacher. Paul doesn't have a job. He's part of our class, too, and he's helped us with our math. Well, me, at least. Why can't he have a job? For once, I agreed with Mandy's complaint, and so did Art. He helped me, too, he said, and he always checks that list of jobs. I had to speak up, too. They're right, right, right. I agree, Mrs. Brisbane replied. I don't know why I didn't think of it. And I know the perfect job for him, too. He can be the class accountant and add up all these points you're earning. Mandy bounced up and down in the chair. Can I tell him? No, let me, Art protested. Mrs. Brisbane laughed and shook her head. You can both tell him. At the end of math class, they did. Paul looked so tall when he left the room, he must have been walking on air. That night, I waited anxiously for Aldo to come in. I was prepared to do anything to keep him awake. In fact, Og and I decided to practice louder wake-up calls in case Aldo was sleepy again. I was squeak, was squeak, squeaking. Og was boing, boing, boinging. And the crickets were chirping in the background when the custodian entered. Whoa, fellas, why all the noise? Og and I quickly quieted down but the crickets kept singing away. Aldo was his old peppy self again as he wheeled in his cart and spun it around. I feel like making noise too, because I'm not tired tonight. No siree, I came armed with this. He reached down on a shelf of the cart next to his lunch bag and held up a metal container. Maria made me a big thermos of coffee. It will keep me awake until I'm finished cleaning. Good, 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 I said, and when he opened the thermos, the coffee smelled yummy, even though it isn't something hamsters usually drink. I was glad I didn't have to launch another unsanitary spitball that night. The next morning, it was pouring rain. March was still coming in like a lion, just like Seth's Grandma Dot had said. When Mrs. Brisbane took attendance, no one answered when she called, Mandy Payne, our Patel or Heidi Hopper, none of them had shown up for school. From time to time, one of my fellow students missed a class or two because of the sniffles or a cough, but on the whole, we had a healthy class, and this was the first time three students were sick at the same time. Mrs. Brisbane made sure that the homework monitor, who was AJ, wrote down all the assignments to send home to them. I spent most of the morning watching the rain drip down the windows, making everything outside, the trees, the street, the pa passing cars, look blurry. It was too wet for my friends to go outside for recess, so they stayed inside and worked on Humphreyville. When lunchtime came, my friends raced out of class as usual. Mrs. Brisbane was preparing to go to lunch herself when Mr. Morales entered. He was wearing a tie that had all the letters of the alphabet on it in bright colors. Sue, can you talk for a minute? he asked. Sue is Mrs. Brisbane's first name. Most students don't even know their teachers have first names. Of course, have a seat. 
Mrs. Brisbane told him. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I have to tell you, I've had a complaint from a parent. Mrs. Brisbane was surprised. Who's that? Mrs. Payne. Apparently Mandy and her whole family are sick. Coughs, runny noses, watery eyes, and she blames it all on Humphrey. Blames me? I felt as if all the air was being sucked out of me. Mrs. Brisbane was surprised as I was. Humphrey? Why on earth would she think that? Well, he spent the weekend at their house and now they're all sick. So are Art and Heidi, and the weather has been horrible. Goodness, I think I've had fee fewer absences this winter than usual. I believe you, but she's pretty angry. She doesn't think the kids should have to clean his dirty cage. She's called some of the other parents. She even threatened to start a petition to get all the classroom pets banned. Banned? My whiskers drooped, and my heart was heavy. Boing! Og burst out. I guess he realized he was a classroom pet, too. That's ridiculous. Just because her children have colds, Mrs. Payne says her children are never sick. She said she's going, at, going to the school board and expects all their medical costs to be paid. Now, Mrs. Brisbane was getting angry. Paid by whom? Humphrey? You've had him in your house. I've had him in my house. We didn't get sick. I'm on your side, but I have to respond to her. I'll compare the attendance records from last year to this year to see if there's any difference. You could check to see if any of the other students have gotten sick after Humphrey's been at their houses. And I'll talk to the other teachers who have classroom pets. Yes, those guinea pigs in room 14, said Mrs. Brisbane, and the frog in Angie Loomis's root class, and there are rabbits in Mr. Olinsky's class. Oh, but the children love to have Humphrey come home with them. I, The parents love him too. Except for the pains. Mrs. Brisbane got very quiet. She was thinking of something, and I don't think it was something good. Our Patel is absent today, and he had Humphrey at his house last weekend. I'll call his mother and see what's wrong with him. Good idea. And for now... Principal Morales stopped and glanced over at Og and me. Maybe you'd better keep Humphrey at your house. Og, too. Mrs. Payne was pretty upset. She even said she might call a lawyer. A lawyer? Was I going to end up in court or in jail? This wasn't just trouble with the capital T. This was total disaster with a capital everything. For the rest of the day, I stared through the bars of my cage and imagined myself looking through another set of bars, the bars on a jail cell. Would Ogden end up in there with me, too? After all, he was a classroom pet, although he didn't go home with students on the weekend. At the end of the day, Principal Morales helped Mrs. Brisbane cover my cage and carry Ogden and me out to the car. Thank goodness the rain had stopped. They brought along our food, including Og's icky, yucky crickets. Luckily, it was cold, so they were quiet in the car. I'm really sorry about this, Sue, the principal told Mrs. Brisbane through the car window. My husband will be thrilled to have these two home with him, but I'm afraid my students will be very disappointed. Very, 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 I thought. I'll try to get this resolved as soon as possible, Mrs. Mr. Morales promised. Mrs. Brisbane thanked him and rolled up the window. Soon we were on our way to her house, but for how long? Just as she'd said, Mr. Brisbane was really glad to see us. Mrs. Brisbane honked the horn and he came out to the driveway in his wheelchair to meet her, even though it was extremely cold. Put Humphrey's cage right here across the armrest, he told his wife. I'll come back and get Og. Okay, I'll bring in the food. Soon Og and I were side by side on the Brisbane's wide coffee table. It was warm and cozy in their house, and before long, Mr. Brisbane had everything in my cage in Og's house in tip-top shape. 
Mrs. Brisbane came in with steaming cups of tea, and the two of them sat and watched us as they drank it. This pain family sounds like a nuisance, said Mr. Brisbane. I don't know much about them. Mandy complains a lot, but she's a nice girl. I think it's a habit she's picked up. Maybe she has a lot to complain about, Mr. Brisbane said. Yes, 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 I said, hopping on my wheel and spinning to get their attention. Whatever their problems are, they don't have to take them out on Humphrey, do they, buddy? Mr. Brisbane w wiggled a finger through the bars of my cage. Mrs. Brisbane picked up the phone and called Art's mother. I'm checking to see how Art is doing, I heard her say. We missed him in school. I would have loved to hear what Mrs. Patel was saying. Mrs. Brisbane said, oh, and I'm sorry, and what did the doctor say? She listened and then said, did Art show any signs of illness right after Humphrey was there? I held my breath while she waited for Mrs. Patel to answer. This is private, but since you're a room mother, I'll tell you that a parent has complained that having Humphrey at her house made her whole family sick. He and Augur temporarily banned from the classroom. Art's mom answered so loudly, even I could hear her say, That's ridiculous. I know, Miss, Mrs. Patel, but we have to check this out. No, I can't tell you who it is. A number of students were absent today. I'll let you know, and I think you should keep Art home another day. After a polite goodbye, Mrs. Brisbane hung up and turned to her husband. He has had a bad cold. Her husband got it first. Everyone in his office has had it. Well, they didn't catch it from Humphrey, Mr. Brisbane said, setting his cup down hard. No, she was terribly upset. You can imagine how the children will feel. I'll call the hoppers. After a short talk with Heidi's mother, Mrs. Brisbane told her husband that Heidi also had a bad cold, but that she had gotten soaked in the rain two days before. Humphrey had nothing to do with that. He hasn't even been to her house, Mr. Brisbane insisted. You know, I think I'll make another call to the pains. The pains? I wouldn't talk to that pack of troublemakers. Now, Bert, you can catch more flies with honey than with vinegar, you know. Sometimes humans say the strangest things. Why was she calling the pains about catching flies? Og might be interested, but not me. That is a silly expression, if you don't mind me saying so, dear, said Mr. Brisbane. Mrs. Brisbane laughed. You're right. I've never understood why anyone would want to catch flies. Except a baseball outfielder. Bert laughed at his joke, and so did his wife, although I didn't understand it at all. Of course, I'd never been to a baseball game. Before I could figure it out, Mrs. Brisbane decided to call the pains. I held my breath again while she waited for someone to pick up. Hello, is this Mr. Payne? This is Mrs. Brisbane, Mandy's teacher. How is Mandy feeling? She and Mr. Payne had a long exchange about Mandy's health and the health of Tammy, Pammy, and Brian. Then she said, Well, I certainly hope Mandy will be back in classroom soon. We all miss her. She paused to listen for a while longer. The animals are home with me and we're looking into it. Please give Mandy my best. By the way, is Mrs. Payne there? I'd like to talk to her. Mr. Payne gave a short answer this time. I see. Well, please tell her I called. Thank you. Goodbye. Mr. Br Mrs. Brisbane hung up the phone and took a long sip of tea. What did he say? Mr. Brisbane was not a patient man. At that moment, I was not a very patient hamster. It sounds as if they all had colds like Art. When I asked about Mrs. Payne, I learned something new. Mrs. Payne works at night. That could be hard on the family, said Mr. Brisbane. I had to squeak up. It is, 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 especially since Mr. Payne lost his job. Mr. and Mrs. Brisbane burst out laughing. I think Humphrey is trying to tell us something. Mrs. Brisbane came, became more serious. I wish we could understand him. After all, he spent a whole weekend there. I'll bet he could tell us a lot. Boy, was she right. I could write a book about the pains if I only had room left in my notebook. It was pleasant at the Br 
Brisbane's house. They took me out of my cage and made a maze for me to run on the floor, but my heart wasn't in it. About the second time around, the phone rang and Mrs. Brisbane answered. Aldo, is everything all right? She listened for a few seconds, then replied, Sorry, I should have left a note for you. Of course you'd be worried. No, I have Humphrey and Og here for a while. Frankly, there was a complaint about Humphrey making one of my of the students sick, but please don't tell anyone, not even Richie's family. I don't know how long they'll be here, she laughed. I will definitely give them your regards. Once she hung up, Mrs. Brisbane told Og and me that Aldo missed us. How did he happen to have our number? Mr. Brisbane asked. I gave it to him when he was trying to decide to go back to school, in case he had any questions. He's going to make a great teacher. Yes, Aldo would make a great teacher unless he fell asleep on the job, and now I wasn't there to wake him up if he was tired. I hope he had a lot of coffee with him. When she was ready to go to bed, Mrs. Brisbane brought me a slice of apple, but it didn't appeal to me. I'm not hungry, are you, Og? I asked my friend a little later. Boing, he answered. For the rest of the night, he was quiet. The crickets were quiet. I was quiet, too. My brain wasn't quiet, though, as I thought about the next day when I would be absent from class for the very first time. It felt so strange to see Mrs. Brisbane head off for school. I couldn't imagine Room 26 without me. I couldn't imagine without Og, since I was there before he was, but I'd never seen Room 26 without me in it. How could I? As the day went on, I tried to picture my classmates having math class, doing their school jobs, working on Humphreyville, named for me. Mr. Brisbane tried to keep my mind off school by giving my cage a terrifically good clean, though he did uncover a secret. Humphrey, I don't think you've been eating your food. You've just been hiding it. I hung my head because it was true. Ever since Miranda got in trouble, I hadn't been hungry. My yummy treats didn't taste yummy anymore. If you don't eat, you'll get sick, said Mr. Brisbane. Now I'm going to give you some yogurt drops right now, and you're going to eat them. Yes, sir, I squeaked weakly. Mr. Brisbane headed his wheelchair for the kitchen, then abruptly stopped. Wait a second. Maybe you are sick. Why didn't I think of this sooner? You need to see a veterinarian. I was puzzled, trying to figure out why a veterinarian could help. I'm practically a veterinarian myself because I only eat fruits and nuts and vegetables. I have heard of hamsters who like a bit of meat on occasion. Soon, Mr. Brisbane whizzed back into the room with some crunchy, munchy yogurt drops. Eat up, my boy. You have to keep your strength up. You can't give in to troubles. You have to fight back. Was that really what I was doing? Giving in to troubles like Mr. Brisbane had done the first time I met him? I reached down and took a yogurt drop and ate it. It tasted good. I realized I was hungry, so I took another one. That's a good fellow. You've got plenty of fight left in you, haven't you? A few more yogurt drops, and I felt a little fight coming back. I'll call the neighbors to get the name of their vet, and I'll make you an appointment. You'll be back in the classroom before you know it. Mr. Brisbane seemed determined, but Mrs. Payne was determined, too. Once Mr. Brisbane went went off to make his calls, I asked Og, Don't you miss school, old pal? The frog, who usually sat like a large green lump, began to jump up and down, twanging loudly. Boing, 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 boing. I took that to be a yes. Humphrey and Og missing, roof from room 26. Mrs. Brisbane says they are safe at her house. No explanation for their absence is given. The Humphreyville Herald.